<laughs> that Champions League match day, boy. That match day, they were playing football. Everybody was playing football. Everybody was showing the hell up. Might I say this was the best match day so far this Champions League campaign, bro. We got a lot to talk about, so we finna cut straight to the goal of the week nominees. First nominee, we got that boy Galino from Porto. It was off of a goalkeeper assist. Y'all know I love them goalkeeper assists. Goalkeeper. Ugh, knock that hoe all the way past half field to that boy Galino. Galino stuck his foot out there. I stopped the ball. Beautiful touch. Dribbled all the way inside the box. Cut inside to the right. Made them Leverkusen boys clash and run into each other and fall. And then Galino ugh, struck it right there in the back of the net just like that. Next nominee, we got that boy Kilman from that pleasing club. They crossed it inside to that boy. He popped it up with his right. Turned. Ugh, slung that hoe in with his left, bro. That was a nice little pretty ass goal against a big club like Bayern Munich. Next nominee we got, oh, sonny boy, who went on? His teammate popped it up, crossed it to him, and he set his feet, wind it up like Luis. Ugh, knocked it to the back of the net just like that. And then last but not least, last nominee, of course we got that boy Antonio Rudiger. Put his body on the line to tie the ball game up for Real Madrid. He headed that ball. The opponent's team goalkeeper literally just torpedoed. Head butted Rudiger straight in the head. They clashed into each other in the air. Rudiger got up. Rudiger head busted wide open. I'm talking about leaking Kool-Aid everywhere. I won't be surprised if that man had a concussion. Leave down in the comments what y'all think goal of the week is. And of course, I'm going to announce my goal of the week at the end of the episode, bro. Before we get to talking about these games, this video was brought to you by them boys over there at Manscaped. Welcome to Fresh Ball Fall. It's the season of pumpkin spice and making sure your crotch looks nice. That means sipping cider in a fall breeze and using Manscaped products to trim your balls with ease. That's right, today's show is brought to you by Manscaped, a company here to make sure that your foliage isn't the only thing shedding its excess leaves. Hell, even Mother Nature knows when it's time to lose the excess clutter for fall. Join the 6 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with the code BRONCO. Whether you brand new or already with us at Manscaped, you can use the crown jewel of care for your family jewels, the Platinum Package 4.0. With this glorious package, you can align your entire hygiene routine all in one swoop. Inside the 10-part Platinum Package is everything you know and love about the Performance Package, plus some shower goodies included to elevate your grooming game to Platinum. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer feature proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate hearts and holes. Both are waterproof so you can keep scaping even as the weather's changing. In addition to shaving, you can now completely upgrade your shower routine with the Ultra Premium Body Wash and Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo Conditioner. You'll have your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Don't forget to apply the aluminum-free Ultra Premium deodorant and don't worry, it's not pumpkin spice, it's a cologne quality fragrance. But we shouldn't save a signature scent for our pits. Use Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner to make sure your go-to smell is top shelf and not sweaty balls. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Platinum Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and Shed Travel Bag. Get the Platinum Package this fall. These products are guaranteed to be hits for your dangly bits. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code BRONCO. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com when you use the code BRONCO. Manscaped, clear out the leaves. It's your tree trunks time to shine. Alright, we got group A, them Napoli boys is still sitting at the top of the group under goddamn feet. Four wins, zero draws, zero losses, sitting with 12 points. Then we got them, you never walk alone, boys. Them Liverpool boys sitting in second with nine points. We got Ajax in third with three points, and then we got them Ranger boys in last with zero points. No goddamn wins, no goddamn draws, just straight losses. And speaking of them Ranger boys, them you never walk alone, boys. Whooped. Fay. Yes, my boy Mohamed Salah with the fastest hat trick in Champions League history. Bro got brought in the game. Six minutes, 12 seconds. That boy Mo Salah got him a hat trick just like that. Going into this game, the Rangers is facing elimination. If they don't win this game, they get eliminated from the pool. And they play like that. They play like it was a dire situation. They hit the grounds running. That boy Arfield, they had a counterattack. Arfield had the ball. Ugh, outside that busy, it's 1-0 in the 17th minute. And I'm sitting there like, bro, no, bro. 
No, because you know Liverpool going through a lot of injuries. They going through a lot of bad times. I'm like, bro, if Liverpool loses to the Rangers, you might as well just call the season done. Finished. It's a finished season. But that boy Roberto Firmino said, do not worry. I'm in form, and I'm playing the best football of my life right now, man. Liverpool had a corner seven minutes later. Greek scouts across that hoe in. Roberto Firmino box bro out and uh, headed that hoe straight in just like that. Tied the ball game up to set the tone for the rest of the game. Second half hit Liverpool on a counterattack. Joe Gomez threw that hoe to the middle. Who else? Who else is in the middle? That boy Roberto Firmino, he knocked that hoe in to get him a brace to get Liverpool up. 2-1. 11 minutes later, Roberto Firmino is not done contributing. Carvalho to Roberto. Roberto to goddamn Darwin Nunez, and Darwin Nunez knocks in a curved ground ball past the goalkeeper to get Liverpool three points. Then the cameras cut over to the sideline. I start to hear that music. You see that boy Mo with the pro, Mr. Mo Salah, getting ready to get subbed on for that boy Darwin who just scored. I heard that music. You heard the music right now. 76 minutes, the ball is popped in the air. Mo Salah gets control of that ball. He he dribbles a little bit. Us. He hit the ball to the back of the net. Four minutes later, Mo Salah has the ball at the top of the key. He gets jiggy. He hits the sauce on the ass. He uh, strike that hoe to the back of the net. Less than one minute later, Mo Salah knocked it in from the right side of the field for the fastest hat trick in Champions League history. Six minutes and 12 seconds, that's all it took. That's all it needs. And he also broke another record with that last goal. Most Champions League goals scored for an English club. Shout out to that boy Mo with the pro. He has finally arrived for this season. If Mo was in form, it's over for everybody. Liverpool is finishing top four in the Premier League. You hear me? And them Liverpool boys wasn't done scoring. It was close to the end of the game. It was a deflected ball off of a goalkeeper. Blocked that boy Harvey Elliott. Say, don't mind if I do. Ran up. Ugh, knocked that hoe in. Liverpool seven. Ranger boys, Uno. Rangers are officially eliminated from knockout stage contention. Napoli versus Ajax. We seen what happened last game. Napoli whooped that ass 6-1. Was it a fluke or could we expect that same thing again? Four minutes in, Napoli busted it open just like that, bro. That boy Chucky Lozano, Mexicano, conquer cap, brother. Little give and go. Hit up that hoe in to go at 1-0 super early like that. I was like, yep, it's finna be another ass whooping. 12 minutes later, Raspadori nailed it in top left corner off of a Kavara assist. It was 2-0 Napoli way going into halftime and right outside the half to start the second half. Them AX boys struck back. They crossed it inside the box and that boy classic from AX ended up headering it in. To close the lead a little bit closer, it was 2-1. But then to destroy all of AX's momentum, it was a handball and that boy Kavara knocked that hoe in to make it 3-1. The situation is looking dire. The game basically damn near over. But then it was another penalty that happened, but this time it was AX's favor. It was low-key Mickey Mouse penalty. They called a penalty off of a little ass fall. Forgive me if I butchered his name, but is it Bergwin? Bergwin, Bergwin from AX ended up hitting that penalty to make it 3-2. They low-key had a little bit of light, but man. I don't know what they was doing. Somebody from the back line had the ball. He was just chilling. They chilling. They like, man, the game almost over. I'm going to lounge around. I'm chilling. Osherman straight ran towards that boy. Man, move. Took that ball from that man and struck it in just like that. I said... Damn, that's how you feeling? That hoe was low key kind of disrespectful right there, but Napoli ended up winning the game. The game ended 4 2. Napoli clutches a spot to the knockout stages, and they still have not lost a game yet. Not only have they not lost a game, they haven't drew a game yet. They got straight victories, 100% victory percentage. Next group up, we got Group B. Club Broods is still sitting at top with 10 points. Porto is followed behind them boys with 6. Then we got Atletico Madrid in third with 4. And then we got Bayer Leverkusen from the Bundesliga in last last with three points. Atletico versus Club Brews. It was a nil-nil draw. Club Brews' first draw of the season because, you know, them boys came into the game with 100% victory percentage. And, bro, Club Brews' keeper, that Migno, that dude, he was a goddamn brick wall. It was a no-fly zone around her. He ain't letting nothing through his way. He blocked. I'm talking about he was blocking everything. But, yeah, with that nil-nil draw, Club Brews clinches their way to the knockout stage. Shout out to them Brews boys. Bayer Leverkusen versus Port Total the winner of this game takes second place above Atletico Madrid. And after I read all the table, y'all already know who won the game. Six minutes in the game. This is where we had our goal of the week nominee. 
Porto goalkeeper, runs that hole all the way downfield. Goalkeeper assists. Galino stopped the ball with his foot. He ran inside the box, cut inside to the right. The Leverkusen boys clashed into each other in field, and Galino uh, knocked that hole in. 1-0, six minutes in just like that. That's how you set the tone right there. Leverkusen had an opportunity to tie the ball game up because not too long after that, it was a missed time tackle from somebody on Porto. Leverkusen had a pin. But sadly, Demir Bay wasn't clutch enough and he got his ass packed up by Porto's goalkeeper. Then we had another penalty in the second half, 53rd minute. But Porto was the ones who favored off of this one. That boy Taremi lined up to take that pin. Ush, knocked it to the back of the net. Just like that, Porto is up 2-0. Oh. And then we had another penalty. 11 minutes later, Mr. Parimi, you gotta call him Parimi now. That boy got a brace off of penalties, back-to-back -back penalty goals. Mr. Parimi knocked that hoe in to give Porto the lead over Leverkusen 3-0. Group C. Ah, them Bayern Munich boys is at the top of the group, of course, with 12 points. 100% victory percentage, four wins, no ties, no draws. We we got into Milan sitting there second place. Not them Lona boys, not Barcelona. Inter Milan is still sitting there second place with seven points. Barcelona is in third place and it's looking like them boys is going back to the Europa League. They sitting in third with four points. And then of course the pleasing club is in last place with zero. You already know we gotta start it off with the game of the week in my opinion. Barcelona versus Inter Milan. Of course this is a must win for Barcelona because if they lose this game they are officially eliminated from knockout stage contention. Inter Milan Milan could have busted it open early. That boy DeSecco had a sitter, but it bounced off the crossbar and it looked like it bounced in. And unfortunately, it bounced on the line, but it didn't bounce past the line, so there wasn't a goal. Inter Milan could have busted it open real early, just like that. And then, right before the half ended in the 40th minute, that boy Rafinha had the ball. He hustled for that hoe, had it near the corner. He passes to Sergio Roberto. Sergio Roberto passes to Dembele, and Dembele tapped that hoe in just like that. To give Barcelona the lead going into halftime 1-0. Right outside the half, that boy Bastoni had the ball and Borella somehow, some way snuck past Barcelona's goddamn back wall unnoticed. Nobody literally noticed him. He tiptoed past they ass. That boy Bastoni smoothly crossed that hole to Borella. Borella hit the ball off his thigh. Ugh, struck it in to tie the ball game up 1-1. 13 minutes later, into Milan say, we finna try to put the game out of goddamn reach. It was a high cross of that boy Lataro. Lataro got control of the ball. Knocked it in. 2-1 over Barcelona. It's not looking too good for them loner boys, man. But then, that boy Rob Lubidowski, it's the last 10 minutes of the game. He say, bro, I'm not going out like this, buddy. He headed the ball and then it got deflected and then he ended up hitting it in like that to tie the ball game up 2-2 in the last 10 minutes of the game. Everybody teed up. Barcelona got that momentum. But then Inter Milan said, uh-uh. Lotaro curved a nice ass curved through ball inside the box and that boy Robin Goshen struck it to the back of the net to put the game out of reach. Everybody celebrating. Enter all them Inter boys running across the field. The whole team running across the field. But then that boy Robert Lewandowski put his cape on. He say, uh-uh. I just told y'all boys I'm not going out like that. In the second minute of added time, Eric Garcia with a cross. Robert Lewandowski with a strong ass head of the title ball game up. 3-3 to give Barcelona a little bit of hope to try and win this game. It's four minutes of added time left and Inter Milan had two opportunities. They had two opportunities to send them Barcelona boys home, but they couldn't capitalize. So the game ended up tied 3-3. And the only way Barcelona can make the knockout stages now, if they beat Bayern and the pleasing club. The pleasing club, we already know, that's, that's obtainable. But Bayern Munich, you think y'all boys can beat Bayern Munich? I don't think so. Not only do they got to do that, but they need Inter Milan to drop points to both Bayern Munich and the pleasing club. So, hey, man, it's not looking too good for them loner boys. Y'all was talking hella trash before the Champions League season started in preseason. Y'all was like, bro, we're making a deep-ass Champions League run. Y'all boys ain't even making the knockout stages, bro. Damn, that's tough.
Next up, we got Pleasing and Byron. You already know how this game turned out. Byron was playing some team ball. First team minutes, that boy Sadio with a smooth ass get and go. Sadio to Goreska. Goreska back to Sadio. Struck it in just like that. 1 0 early. Four minutes later, Conan with an easy through ball to the middle to that boy Thomas Miller. Thomas Miller struck it in. Goreska ended up knocking one in just inside the box. Then Leroy Sunday threw the ball to the middle to that boy Goreska. Goreska popped it over the goalkeeper to get himself a brace with two goals and to make the overall score. 4-0 before halftime even happened. Second half, I ain't gonna lie, it was all them pleasing club boys. 62nd minute, that boy Vil Canova, is that how you say his name? Sorry if I pronounced his name wrong, but Vil Canova, he hit a mean ass volley inside the box. And then we had the goal of the week nominee. The, the ball was through to Killman. He popped it up with his right foot, turned his body, swung his left, knocked that ball to the back of that net just like that. The game ended 4-2, Byron Muni's way. Group D, we got them Tottenham Cock boys sitting at the top of the group with seven points. Marseille and Sporting is two and three. They both got six points. And then we got Frankfurt at the bottom of the group. Like I predicted, I predicted Frankfurt to be at the bottom of the group. But y'all attack me for that. They seen at the bottom right now with four points. Tottenham versus Frankfurt. Them Tottenham boys did their thing. Frankfurt opened the scoring up early 14 minutes in. Deer from Tottenham had a heavy ass touch. And I'm talking about they straight bullied his ass. Everybody was fighting for the ball. There was a commotion for the ball. And then Kamada from Frankfurt while everybody was scrambling for the ball. He just ran up. Ugh. Knocked that hoe in like that. And then after this, it was pretty much all Tottenham. It didn't take long for them cock boys to strike back. Six minutes later, they had a counterattack. That boy Harry Kane threw it to... None other than Sonny Boy. Sonny Boy had the ball one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. Ugh, knocked that hoe to the back of the net. Tied the ball game up 1-1. Seven minutes later, Perry Payne had the ball. He was inside the box. He got bumped to the ground. And, of course, he ended up taking the penalty and making it. I swear, that man Harry Kane done took the most penalties out of everybody, like, out of all competitions. That man stay taking penalties. And, of course, he knocked that hoe down. Then, less than 10 minutes later, this was a goal of the week nominee. It was a pop-up cross to that boy's son while he was in the middle of the box. He wanted that hoe up like Luis. <gasps> Made the score 3-1, just like that. And then them Frank boys actually ended up scoring at the end of the game. That boy Addy Do headed it in off of a cross when they had a corner. Tottenham over them Frankfurt boys, 3-2. We got Sporting Marseille. Sporting didn't score a goal this game. Marseille ended up scoring two. Somebody from Sporting ended up getting sent off early with a red card, so they was with 10 men, damn near the whole game. 20th minute, that boy Mateo ended up scoring a penalty. 10 minutes after that first goal, it was a counterattack pass to the inside to that boy Alexis Sanchez. Alexis Sanchez tapped that hoe in. 2-0 Marseille over them Sporting boys. Group E, we got Chelsea sitting at the top with seven points. Salzburg is close behind them on their ass. They close in second with six. And then eight. AC Milan and Dinamo Zagreb is in third and fourth, both tied up with four points. Dinamo Zagreb versus Salzburg. Salzburg busted it open early, 12 minutes in. Seawald got the ball off a of deflection, and then he, ugh, he powerfully struck that hoe at the bottom left corner. Right before the half, I'm sorry, I'm bad with these names, but is it Jubacic? Lubacic? Lujubacic? I'm bad with them, like, Croatian-sounding names, bro. But that dude, he had the ball headed straight to him from a Salzburg player. And Lubacic say, don't mind if I do. He ran up from outside that bees again. Ugh! And it deflected off of a Salzburg player. But it ended up going in, though, to make the score 1-1. And nobody else scored that game. So that was the ending result. AC Milan versus Chelsea. We knew the result last time. Chelsea beat them boys 3-0. And it was kind of a similar result this time. I ain't gonna lie. AC Milan had to play with 10 men damn near the whole game because Tamori got sent off in the first 20 minutes off of an undeserved red card, in my opinion. That was like the softest red card I have ever seen. But of course, denial of a goal scoring opportunity is an automatic red, so I guess rules are rules. Milan had to play the rest of the game with 10 men and Chelsea capitalized off that. Their red card also resulted in a penalty and that boy Zorzinho ended up knocking in the penalty to make it 1-0. Then in the 34th, that boy Boumiang swooped in and knocked the ball to the back of the net to make the score 2-0. Chelsea over AC Milan. Group F, we got Real Madrid sitting at the top with 10 points. We got Leipzig in second with six. We got Shaq Tardonsk in a close third with five. And then we got them Celtic boys in last place with one. It was nil nil at halftime and right outside the second half. Shaq Tar got on the board. That boy Zubkov headed that hoe. He barely even jumped. It was stationary as hell. They had that 1 0 lead the rest of the game and it was looking like Shaq Tar was finna get them three points off of Real Madrid. It was five minutes of stoppage time added. And in the fourth minute of added, Tom, it was a cross towards the middle. That boy Rudiger ran up, sacrificed his body. 
Headed that hoe, ball went in. In basketball, we call that a goddamn and one. He headed that hoe, us, and one. Shaq Tar's goalkeeper literally mistletoe head butted that man Rudiger straight in the head. Head busted wide open. I'm talking about leaking everywhere, blood everywhere. I'm surprised bro ain't had no concussion. And it was weird because on a picture of him bleeding, it was a blood splotch of a heart right here on this goddamn collar right there. The symbolism right there is goddamn amazing. It makes me want to shed a tear. But yeah, Real Madrid tied that ball game up with Antonio Rudiger's heroicism, black German dude with the heroicism. So Real Madrid don't have to drop three points. Instead, they tie the ball game up and they get one point. Celtic versus Leipzig. Celtic had hella chances to score in the first half, but they missed a whole bunch like in the 26 minute. Them boys hit the crossbar twice in less than like three seconds. Them boys just wasn't lucky. In the 75th, that boy Timo Werner headed the ball in off of a little pop-up cross. Then in the 84th, it was an easy pass to a shot. That boy Forrest Bird struck that hoe in in the top right corner. Leipzig wins the game 2-0. Dos set up that ass, and Celtic officially cannot make the knockout stages. Group G, we got Man City at the top with 10 points. They 100% victory percentage has been spoiled this week. We got Dortmund in second with seven, and then we got Sevilla and Copenhagen at three and four, both tied up with two points each. Dortmund and Sevilla, a win gives BVB a ticket to the knockout stages. Sevilla said, bump all that knockout stage talk. They scored within 20 minutes. They had them in set piece. They crossed it to the middle. That boy Nianzu ended up hitting that hoe to the back of the net for a 1-0 lead. That boy Drew Bellingham in the 35th, the longest give and go I have ever seen. Drew Bellingham passes to Munner. Munner passes back to Drew Bellingham. Drew Bellingham equalized the game just like that. 1-1. All Dortmund has to do is score one more to punch that ticket to the knockout stages, but they failed to do so. My boy Gio Reyna. Gio had the ball. He put the moves on everybody. This was an added time. This would have been a clutch-ass goal. He put the moves on everybody, dribbled through that D, crossed it across the box, but nobody was on the receiving end to tap it in just like that. Then BVB boys sold the goddamn bag off of a great-ass dribble and run by my boy Gio Reyna, American boy. But yeah, BVB failed to score. They don't clinch their way to the knockout stages this week. And the game ends up tied 1-1. Copenhagen versus Man City. Now, I was expecting an ass whooping. I'm sure y'all was expecting an ass whooping. I'm sure the whole world was expecting an ass whooping. That didn't happen. Erling Holland was on the bench and he didn't play all game. And then the game ends nil-nil. What does that tell you? Now, albeit Man City did have some chances to score. Rodri had him outside that beasy that was called back for a handball in the first 10 minutes. Then they got them a penalty and that boy Riyad ended up getting packed. Then to make matters worse, Sergio Gomez got sent off with a red card five minutes later because he denied a goal scoring opportunity. So Man City played the rest of the game with 10 men and they couldn't score, Copenhagen couldn't score. The game ended with a nil-nil draw. And for the last group of the evening, we got group eights and one and two. We got Potty Side, Jamal, and Benfica, and they both are tied up with eight points. And then we got Juventus and Haifa at the third and fourth spot, both tied up with three points each. Haifa versus Juventus, them Haifa boys just trying to get their first dub this Champions League window and their first Champions League victory since 2002. And they did exactly that. Seven minutes in, that boy Azili headed the ball in off of a cross. He low key, he low key headed that hoe off of his back. And then and right before the half, Haifa was on a counterattack as Zili got the ball and then he curled the ball in to the right side of the goal. 2 0, dos I said on that ass. Haifa over Juventus. Juventus, what in the hell is going on with y'all? The old lady not looking too good, man. Champions League and in the damn Serie A. Last game of the evening, we got Paris Saint-Germain versus them Benfica boys. Mbappe, y'all already know the Mbappe controversy heading into the game. It was rumors. I don't know how, if it's true or not, because some people came out and said it wasn't true. But the majority of the rumors just saying Mbappe wants to leave the club because of distrust and ownership or something like that. I made a whole video about that go check it out if you ain't seen it and this game was a goddamn penalty game 40 minute that boy Mbappe hit him a penalty and then in the 60 seconds Zhao Mario from Benfica ended up hitting a pin to equalize the game the game ended up tied 1-1 and them boys is both tied up with eight points each that's the conclusion of this Champions League match day five man this dead ass has to be the most entertaining match day this Champions League window and now for my Champions League goal of the week nominee winner I'ma have to go with my boy Antonio Rudiger's header to tie 
how the ball game up in the last minute of added time. Sacrificed his body, put his body on the line. He got up leaking Kool-Aid. Damn near probably got a concussion. Had to get stitches. All for the love of the game, man. And if you ain't seen my Premier League match week review, go ahead and watch that thing. It'll help me out. Support me. Like, comment, subscribe. Do all of that. Share with all your friends. Share this video with all your friends. Like it up. Comment if you ain't subscribed. Go ahead and subscribe. I'll see y'all boys next time. I'm out.